Entitled sister-in-law wants custody of my baby. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Honestly, first of all, this guy is delusional. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. Uh, Why am I here? <laughs> I mean... What? Welcome to Latinas on Mass! Welcome back, guys! I'm your host, Suleika. And I'm your favorite pelona, Caro. And this is the third episode! Hey, it is getting really serious. Oh it's my goodness. It's getting super serious. <laughs> yes. I mean, if we got to manage to meet that for a third time for the same purpose, mm -hmm. that's, that's at least for us a big deal, I think. <laughs> we are sticking with this, really. <laughs> And we hope you enjoy it this far. So the theme for this episode is going to be These people are delusional. Like this story... Delulu, delusional, delusional. Yeah. And I think being delulu is not the salulu here. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> exactly. So we're going to see. But that's the theme. So are you ready? I'm ready, girl. I'm good. always ready for the cheese, man. Woo! Let's get into it. So... Let's start with the first story. Our first story is from the subreddit Relationship Advice. Mm, love it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the, it, it's, it already sounds good, you know. As And soon as it's, yeah. human beings are involved, I like it. Yeah. And it's fitting <laughs> because so this uh, episode is probably going to drop right after Valentine's Day. So right really? on the theme of love in the air, oh, we hope. <laughs> what, what do you think about Valentine's Day in general? Like, what's oh, your okay. opinion about that? I don't really celebrate it. Okay. I think the most I do on Valentine's Day is write my sister a message as it's her name day, mm. Valentina. Okay. Um, but uh, I think I think we're here in Switzerland. We just don't celebrate it that much. It's not as commercialized. So yeah. I don't actually I mean, have a strong opinion like, about it. Like the shops still uh, gain millions, yeah. I think, in yeah. Switzerland for Valentine's Day when it comes to flowers. But and would you, if you, if you had a partner, would you stress yeah. out about celebrating Valentine's Day? Absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely not. <laughs> Are you stressed out as a single as for not having someone in Valentine's Day? Uh, no, but I mean, you know, the the lovely dovey vibes are there so <laughs> oh, okay. do, you do feel kind of well at least i do feel uh, a little bit depressed but yeah. otherwise oh, no otherwise i'm, gonna write, I'm fine I'm, guys guys <laughs> I'm, <laughs> i'm gonna send her flowers this valentine's day you know what i'm, I'm gonna surprise her <laughs> okay. you heard nothing <laughs> but remember that we have uh, one mutual friend that actually has his birthday on valentine's day Right, and I'm fun. so bad at remembering <laughs> birthdays, so yeah, me I know too, but exactly <laughs> who you mean. Yes. No, no, I forgot. But let's let's, <laughs> let's let's edit this out, okay, for the friend who has birthday on Valentine's Day. No, but that must that must be funny being you know born on the day of love. Mm. <laughs> Okay, well, but, but, but let's get into the story. Okay, yeah, let's, let's see if let's there's see. romance in the air mm. here or not. Mm. Okay, my 27 female roommates, 27 female, boyfriend, 31 male. Okay. Still got you here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Planned a surprise proposal against her wishes. <laughs> I kept quiet and now our friendship is strained. How do I fix this? Okay. Let's get into the story. Yeah. So me, 27 female, and my friend slash roommate, Nicole, 27 female, have known each other since university. Nicole has been dating her boyfriend, Brandon, 31 male, for roughly a year. Honestly, none of us are fond of Brandon, but he was Nicole's rebound from a long-term relationship, so we all kind of just assumed he wouldn't be around for long enough to make us stink about it. <laughs> To my surprise, a couple of weeks ago, Brandon messaged me asking me to help plan a surprise proposal for Nicole for their one-year anniversary. Mm -hmm. 
I pretty much knew for a fact that they hadn't discussed getting engaged beforehand because Nicole has on multiple occasions mentioned that her relationship was not that serious. And not even two weeks ago, she said that they would probably break up before she moves to work on a master's next year. Anyway, for context, here's how my convo with her boyfriend went. Brandon. Him asking me to help him plan a surprise proposal. Me. Oh, that's exciting. Does Nicole know you're planning on proposing? Brandon. No, and she isn't going to. I want it to actually be a surprise. Please keep this between us. Me. If that's the case, I wish you luck, but I won't be helping. I really don't think she'll want to be blindsided with a public proposal. Brandon. Well, you can either help or I'll be doing a Jumbotron proposal at our city's professional hockey team's game. What? Your choice. What? What is that? Kind of, that's a very American thread, I think. <laughs> can you repeat that? What? So she either helps him or what? Or <laughs> he'll be doing a Jumbotron proposal at their city's professional hockey team's game. It's her choice. Oh my gosh. <laughs> all right, all right. Continue, continue. <laughs> By the last message, I assumed he was just trying to manipulate me and stopped replying. I really didn't think he'd be stupid enough to propose at an NHL game since Nicole hates hockey. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> I didn't want to meddle, so I just kept quiet to Nicole. To my horror, a couple days ago, Nicole messages a group chat with us and a couple of friends and tells us she's stumping Brandon. When someone asked why, she said, he told me to dress up for a special night he planned for our anniversary. He brought me to a f***ing <laughs> hockey game. <coughs> oh girl, oh girl, wait for it. <laughs> I realized I screwed up by not telling her before, so I called her frantically and texted her to get the hell out of there if she doesn't want to be proposed to on the Jumbotron. I think this... I, I don't know if I'm mistaken, but could mm. it be that this... Jumbotron is this big screen? I have no idea. I, I either. <laughs> I have no clue what this <laughs> is. Everything that has to do with architecture, infrastructure, <laughs> or anything <laughs> serious about about buildings, I'm terrible at. I'm gonna Google it afterwards quickly, but um, yeah. Thankfully, she saw my text before it happened and left the game before he could propose. Okay, now I actually quite quickly want to know because I think it is what I'm thinking of. Jumbo <laughs> Trom, was it? Okay, yes, Yay! it is what I was thinking. It's it's those big screens you see um at the stadiums. And yeah, so. you know where the kids ah, camps. Okay, okay. So Maybe you can show a picture later on for, for yeah, the but viewers. Like, yeah. yeah, truly public. So, I mean, he, he's meaning public, so that public. everyone sees it. Not everyone. only the people in, fr in the front row yeah. or behind them. Like, everyone, everyone at the stadium needs to see them. Okay. And who knows if this is streamed. So, everyone, everyone. Yeah. Okay, good. That, I think it was just necessary to know for the yeah, story. Yeah, to picture it. Uh, okay. So, thankfully, she saw my text before it happened and left the game before he could propose. They got in a big fight afterwards and broke up before Nicole got home that evening. Nicole is furious now and has been acting really off with me. She's pissed I didn't tell her about him wanting to propose in that way. Honestly, I just don't know what to do here. I feel like I was just put in a shit situation and Nicole is acting like I'm the reason all this happened. <laughs> is there any way to at least kind of mend the friendship and go back to normal? We're supposed to live together as a roommate for several more months after this. So I'd really like to move past this. Dude. <laughs> Honestly, first of all, this guy is <laughs> delusional. <laughs> No, I mean, what could be better than bringing the person you love the most to a place she <laughs> fucking doesn't want to be in, not even for in her free time, you know? I mean, yeah. I don't I get mean, that. Oh, uh, we're peeking on romance here. Love is in the air. Everywhere I look around. <laughs> what? I mean, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, I'm sorry, I mean, 
proposing after being one year together uh, I mean I don't want to judge anyone I mean I don't know their their history but since she's saying to her friends it's not that serious I'm pretty sure she is also giving him signals that it's not that serious yeah but on the other Ugh. hand I've been thinking about how I would feel if I would be like in his position where my partner or my boyfriend mm. would tell everyone that it's nothing serious like I don't know that 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 kind of sucks doesn't it when yeah. when you're with somebody and they constantly tell people it's not serious uh, yeah you know I think as a delulu yeah. person that <laughs> hurts a lot I, I just I was just thinking like oh how can you be with people that already know that after finishing college mm -hmm. will will break up with you like that uh, yeah that I mean, hurts. It's, it's also not my cup of tea of relationship because it would feel for me like wasting time yeah then again i kind of understand i mean it's a rebound relationship for her i mean we don't know how they got together i assume and i really hope that nicole did tell him on several occasions it is rather casual this relationship probably mm -hmm. and i mean people do like that and i respect that totally mm -hmm. but if she did why on earth would you think of proposing i mean seriously why <laughs> and then you write her friend and her friend tells you don't do, do it. it do not do it <laughs> she won't be happy i won't help you why do you continue <laughs> yeah and then i mean obviously he doesn't even know or, or he i mean i don't know what he think he, do, he either doesn't know her well that he did it there where she hates i mean she wasn't even happy about going there on her anniversary less than proposing mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. oh my goodness no and i mean yeah one year of knowing this person of being together but still knowing that she doesn't mm -hmm. take it seriously like I think it, that the proposing nowadays is like the same strategy or it has the same impact as the having a, a, a baby will, 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 you know, save the relationship oh, kind, of, yeah, kind yeah. of method. But, mm -hmm. you know, if before, like if a, a few decades before you had to have a baby to try <laughs> to save the relationship, now it's kind of marriage, I think, what, what makes I some people both. believe... It could save the relationship. I think somehow. it's it's kind of both. Uh. I think for so, it, it depends on the relationship. I think some thing think if they get pregnant or if they have a baby together, then that will save the relationship. And something think oh my god, sorry, I can't talk anymore. It's okay, me for, neither. <laughs> we're Delulu thinking yeah. that we can speak English, so that's okay. That's yeah, yeah, we're right in the theme. <laughs> no, and yeah. I, I, I think for some it's like, oh yeah, if we just get married, if I lock him down or vice versa, mm -hmm. then everything will be solved and don't. You know, okay, marriage does change nothing except for making it harder for you to go out. So don't, if you're not 100% sure. And I mean, as someone who got married young and people were t telling me, don't do it because you're <laughs> young and everything. Yeah. It, w it, it doesn't change anything except for making it harder to go out. So be sure you have the right person and don't think the person will change just because of that. And also baby doesn't change anything. It makes it harder. Good relationships often break apart because of having a baby, because it's such a strain on your relationship. So thinking it will heal a broken one is the Lulu. <laughs> it's I mean, maybe in the 1950s, you know, it would have worked if you got a baby. Uh, but nowadays... I mean, like... it would have locked the other person down, <laughs> yeah. but I think it would not make you happy. No. <laughs> but what do you think about the friend Nicole being suddenly angry at OP? I mean... Uh, I mean, I totally disagree with that because the friend, the only thing that she wanted to do was to not yeah. be compromised in any way. Like she knew that wasn't her business. Yeah. So she just said, I'm not going to help you with any of that. She just ignored it, which yeah. I think is the best thing you can do. Yeah. So I, I think yeah. I'm on her side here. Like I think she reacted totally proper yeah, for I mean, her situation, like true, for her yeah. status as a roommate. <laughs> I think there's not really some, I mean, yeah, she could have told her straight away, but then yeah. again, let's just assume out of complete surprise, he proposed this way and Nicole loved it. Mm. I mean, 
Imagine if the friend would have told her and it turned out that it was exactly what she wanted, even though she said something else all the time, then she would have been the asshole for ruining the proposal. Mm. So it is it is not her business to tell her, yeah, actually. Yeah, like she, she didn't <clears throat> want to mix herself in that kind of situation. Yeah. She told her in the uh. second when it was happening. Yeah. And then again, I also kind of understand OP for thinking that he would never really go through with that. I mean, mm. who in the right mind would do that? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Brandon, obviously. Mm. <laughs> no, so I I don't get why when Nicole is angry. Um, but but that that would sound similar to the situation where you know friends ask themselves um, if they should tell their friend. Um, you know those kind of situations where where you saw or you know that mm-hmm. uh, your best friend's boyfriend is cheating on yeah. her, like. Are you in the position to tell them or are you in the position of not telling them? I think Good it is question, kind of the though. same problem there. Yeah. Like, should I tell them? Should I not tell them? Should I mix myself up in the business? Is it my obligation to do so or not? Like, yeah. what would you prefer in that situation? Like, if, for example, if I yeah. if I have a boyfriend and you mm-hmm. know that he's cheating on me, like, would you, t- would you tell me anything or not? I think it depends mm. if... I would be good friends with your boyfriend. Let's say we hang out all the time, the three of us, and Mm -hmm. I really like him and consider him my my friend. Mm. I think I would approach him first and tell him, look, I know what you're doing. You need to come clean. Tell her or I will. Mm. Um, If I don't know him that well and he's just your boyfriend, I think I would tell you because I feel like my loyalty would be lie with you because Mm. I would, yeah, I would. Then again, if it would be someone I that's not really my friend, like just someone I know, but I don't really have anything to do with that person, I don't know if I would tell. I think mm. in if I would be your roommate and we don't have that honestly, I was in that situation once. I just remembered ah, I was really? in a situation where oh, I, I'm not gonna say names, but let's say <laughs> I had a friend that had a boyfriend, and I had another friend of mine that I knew was kind of in. They were not officially cheating, but it Mm -hmm. felt like emotional (laughs) cheating, you know. Is there Um, official and unofficial cheating? Okay. Yeah, let's say for me, I perceived it as emotional cheating. Uh, But if I I would ask my friend, she would deny that. So there's the way, I don't know. So I I fell in a position where it was one friend against the other friend and I didn't know what to do because Mm. both were my friends. And those two weren't necessarily friends, but also not i mean they knew each other Mm -hmm. so i didn't know what to do because who do you portray here who are you loyal to here and i ended up doing both in a way okay i think i kept for me for a while but Mm -hmm. talked to the friend and told her my opinion that i didn't think it was right and that i feel like she should stop it from her part even though the boyfriend is the biggest asshole here because in the end it would be for him to set boundaries Mm -hmm. but at some point when it just continued i've and you know this other friend always came to me talked about me with me about some stuff about her feelings and everything so I felt really shitty sitting there listening to her feelings and being like uh-huh, I don't know what she would mean mm. <laughs> so I ended up telling her what I knew in a way that I you know I, I kind of try to not be like throwing my other friend under the bus but still somehow telling her what i saw going on <laughs> it was super tell, hard how do you tell one friend that the other friend is not a b- how do you do that how um, did you do it <laughs> i i empathize more on the boyfriend oh, i empathize okay, on the okay. fact that she already had the feeling he is the one to blame <laughs> you know but, but <laughs> she, she already had the feeling that right. something was going on oh, and came okay. to me with it and was like i don't know if i'm crazy or not so mm. i told her about my observations what i saw and i i told her that yeah i saw that those things were happening mm. and um i think that your feeling is right i mean uh, you yeah. didn't deny it you i didn't, didn't deny it you yeah. didn't hide it and I kind of told her that, yeah, what I observed and mm. without saying, you know, yes, she's a b- so, mm. Yeah, you know, it's kind of hard <laughs> telling it without saying the details. I don't uh, want right, to hurt right, the people right, involved. Right, right. But it is a shitty situation. Uh, You're standing between them. It's like, uh, why am I here? <laughs> why am I here? But I do have to say, I was angry, honestly, at my other friend for 
even putting me in that situation because she knew it was my friend mm. and even though she felt like she didn't do obviously out of her point of view or something wrong i did say to her it is honestly very shitty to put me in that situation where mm. i now have to choose what to do on whose side you want yeah be. yeah yeah so yeah <laughs> don't cheat don't do those <laughs> things please yeah. so n- quickly to the comments now yeah. the first comment wrote it sounds like she thinks that since you knew about the jambon tron i don't know if I, I, I probably say <laughs> yeah, that completely whatever wrong. the big the big yeah, screen the big screen <laughs> yeah <laughs> that she might think you did help plan it and i don't blame her for being upset if that if that's what she thinks i'd sit her down to have a conversation about it show her the message between you and brandon where you told him it was a bad idea and refused to have any part in it and let her know that you just thought he was being manipulative and didn't think he was serious about the Jumbotron until she mess- messaged the group. This honestly seems like a classic miscommunication scenario between mm. the two of you that can definitely be mended. Yeah. OP responded, Sorry, I should have put this in the post. I just didn't want it to be too long. But when I texted her to leave the game, I also sent screenshots of the messages between her boyfriend and I. So she knows I had nothing to do with the actual planning of it. She's just mad that I didn't tell her about him wanting to propose before, so the situation could have been avoided entirely. I've told her my side of things, but she's still giving me the silent treatment cold shoulder. Well, in that case, it's kind of a toxic friendship, honestly. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, yeah. first of all, giving someone the silent treatment or cold shoulder is never the solution. I mean, no. talk to them. Exactly. And if you're not and willing to feel empathy for how the friend must have felt, you know? Yeah. What? And in the end, it is Brandon that f***ed up, okay? <laughs> he <laughs> proposed. That's something I will never understand about us women. Like, usually when there's a pretty f- boy who ruins relationships <laughs> and friendships, it's always the woman who ends up fighting with each other and the man, you know, who just gets to continue his... F- like I, that's no, what I never really. understand like woman we need to support us each other like way more that's the thing but honestly <laughs> okay I we do now get that women can be shady honestly yeah but in the end if i have a partner and my partner cheats on me i'm gonna be the most angry at my partner because no matter the situation even if she was on to him all the time He's still the one that cheated on me. Mm -hmm. It's still him that had to make the decision. So why be angry? Okay, you can somehow be angry at the woman. I mean, I don't want to say, but but in the end, it's like, the biggest hate needs (laughs) to be thrown at the person that should have been loyal to you and not the other one. Exactly, exactly. That's something I do not understand. And until we we figure that out, (laughs) it's always going to be like a certain inequality because we women do not support each other as much as we should. But anyway, next. Yeah, (laughs) that's a big topic (laughs) that we won't be able to resolve in one night. So, okay, but let's let's move on to next. So, our next story is from the subreddit wait r slash entitled people uh, r s- what entitled people ah oh, okay you okay. know what that means uh, yeah Good. yeah i okay. think so i <laughs> think check. so otherwise i will google it while, okay. <laughs> while you're telling the story <laughs> okay so the title is entitled sister-in-law wants custody of my baby whoa we're starting strong. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Why would you want the custody of a baby? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm it's curious too much, too. <laughs> too much money, too much <laughs> responsibility. Anyway. Okay, well, let's see. Let's see what's going on here. Background. Me, 36 female. Sister-in-law, 40 female. Have been married to her brother for over 10 years. And there's always been some jealousy and resentment from her. She's always felt like I had the life she wanted. Not necessarily with her brother. <laughs> <laughs> to be clarified. <laughs> to be very clear, I hope. But the marriage, family, job, stability, etc. I have three kids. Ten female, eight male and three months female. She got married last year and they decided to start trying for a baby. But she was unfortunately told that she can't have children naturally. She was understandably devastated and the family comforted her as best as we could. We we recently had a family dinner and in the middle of it, she says, Opie, I think it's really unfair that you got to have three kids and I can't have any. 
your baby is my last chance to raise a child. So I think you should give her to me during the week so I can create a motherly bond with her and you can have her on weekends. <laughs> I mean... What? I mean, if she would have worded it differently, I, it would have still sounded good for the mother, you know? Like, if she had told her, like, hey, um, if you need someone to support you or give you a hand, I could take care of her, like, a couple of days during the week or on the weekends, okay, yeah. you know, like a nanny. <laughs> and then, you that, know, yeah. that would have sounded like good, like such a good uh, family member trying to help out. But the fact True. that she said, your daughter is my only chance to experience motherhood. That sounds kind of fucked up. And um, I am pretty sure that she meant it exactly that way. Jeez. I think she's not talking about, you helping know, helping out. out. She's talking about having her daughter. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. And you on weekends <laughs> like, yeah. what? like i'm so generous i mean i'm not taking her away fully just five days of the week <laughs> and then when i can have my fun on the weekends and get drunk yeah or whatever. i mean i still need break okay yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> what the f I, honestly if someone would be serious telling me that i would get so afraid like i would be so afraid of of ever having to deal with this person I think, ever good. I, I think my first, first reaction would be to laugh and be like, <laughs> are you serious? Yeah. What? Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> okay, let's continue. Mm -hmm. Before I could respond, the entire table erupted with everyone talking at once. So I took my older kids upstairs. When I got back to the dining room, her husband was asking what the hell is wrong with her and why she would even think to ask that. Mm. She was trying to justify herself when I asked them to leave. I also said that she's no longer welcomed at my house or around my children until she gets help. She started screaming that I don't deserve my life or my children and that I stole her baby from her. Oh my god. <laughs> that's in oh, so many ways. Hell. That's in so many ways so wrong. Okay. That's, that's so crazy. Her husband... And uh, mother-in-law kept apologizing and dragged her out of the house, still crying and screaming. Now my kids want to know why their aunt wants to take the baby. Poor kids. Oh, <sighs> such a trauma. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I, I couldn't even imagine. I think I would... How can you be so del delusional? I mean... Yeah. Yes, it's tough. You, you can't have children naturally, and that must—that's really heartbreaking. But that she made that connection, you know, like <laughs> it's her—it's her niece, and that she just makes the brain connection of yeah, yeah. she could have been my daughter. It's like so. Crazy. She should have been because yeah. you have enough children. What the heck? Even if she had ten children, yeah. What the hell? Like, to come to that conclusion, what? to blame her for having a child, it's just like. It that is crazy sense. oh my goodness I but she had like a mental breakdown i think maybe yeah. maybe oh she has the, to yeah. i mean i would i would understand kind of if the situation would have been that the um, the that op let's say she would be a surrogate mm -hmm. and decides in the end to kind of keep the baby mm. that would be hard and then i kind of would understand the this anger and resentment of feeling like this should have been my baby. But in this situation, it's completely unjustified. And um, we have some edits. I've been reading the comments, but it's too many to reply. So here are a few points. Number one, we have a security system and camera already installed and no <laughs> one has key to our house. Yes, oh my God. that would be my worry. Imagine yeah. someone like that. Oh. I feel like they would be so unhinged to just break in and Jesus. steal the baby. I mean, people have done way worse thing i feel like uh -huh. oh my goodness i would i would move out yeah i mean we move away way you're telling it that, like she just became crazy because of the fact that and she I mean, couldn't get any babies and overall at the dining table can you imagine just being eating having fun and out of nowhere <laughs> hey i want your baby give it to me like and being serious about I'm it like, what <laughs> what okay number two I will not be able to get a restraining order as, as this one incident isn't enough to justify right. it. Yeah. yeah, okay. Number three, my husband and I spoke to the older kids about it the same night and we'll be having another talk with them to reinforce that sister-in-law is not a safe person anymore. Good. Good for them. Do that. Number four, our country doesn't have the right to bear arms and I also have no interest in getting a gun. 
<laughs> okay, well, let's take in another another extreme. Uh, Fine, extreme with extreme. <laughs> And number five, I will be informing the school and daycare of the issue and giving them her photo. Oh my God. I think people are really thinking of that like, she might abduct the baby and, you know, better be safe than sorry, I guess. But also, I'm asking myself right now, what kind of person you must be for everyone around you who knows you well to be like, oh, she could be capable of kidnapping a child. Oh like what goodness. kind of, per- because yeah, yeah. again, again. I, I do agree that you can't, you know, denounce it to the police just because yeah. of a comment. It was literally a comment. But yeah, what kind yeah. of person you must be in order for your family to believe that, that you could actually kidnap a, a child? Like, yeah, <laughs> you know, I, but I think I think the way she's writing it, I think it probably wasn't the first i mean she she did write that she felt jealous and resentment for and that she wanted her life Mm -hmm. and just based by that it had to be a different situation where she already portrayed you know this extreme form of Mm, jealousy and resentment i mean i mean 10 years is a long time where you know someone and they've been you know probably constant making dips at you about wanting your life so Mm. oh my goodness Oh, can you imagine me? <laughs> no, and honestly, when when I watch movies uh, mm-hmm. where there are crazy women and the and the uh, husbands always have to kind of have the same or experience the same kind yeah. of embarrassment, I would be like, I could never be the husband of those women, oh, you yeah. know? Yeah, <laughs> like I feel imagine. so sorry for those men who who still kind of like because yeah. a lot of them never divorced them or anything, and I'm just like, I could never as a husband be. Yeah, like, I think probably your husband women. has a lot of empathy for the situation that she's really dealing with grief, mm-hmm. and you know. But I do think she has severe mental issues here. Like, mm. the, uh, that sounds not healthy. Um, I'm going to read the comments. Mm-hmm. There was actually an update to this story. You can oh. go find it. I, I actually didn't want to include it because it's really long update. She uh, wrote okay. a lot. And I think it would be just too much to cover right now. Okay, yeah. But I we just, don't want the I quickly I looked into right it. Now. It's just essentially the fact that she was, um, I think... Um, put into a uh, health care system where she's treated now for her mental health issues mm. which is probably for the best yeah, yeah let's quickly go to the comments the top comment was jesus stay safe at least the rest of the family recognizes her craziness which someone replied to i had the same thought usually in reddit stories like this the family backs the crazy one because they are the golden child and yes i know you're a reddit version but we have so many Reddit stories. It's actually crazy. Where families, when someone acts like that, yeah, support that person uh. and tell the other one that you're crazy. Just give it to her. Why are you so egocentric? You would be amazed at how many families actually act like that. Oh, my God. Which is horrifying. So Seriously. many dysfunctional families. Yes. Oh, my God. We're going to have to make an episode about dysfunctional families. Definitely. <laughs> um, and then... They, someone else just goes into um, what you should tell their children. Like, they write, tell them auntie is sad. Auntie wants a baby, but don't worry. She isn't going to take ours. Auntie needs to see a doctor who can help her feel better. I'm sorry to say I've been through this situation twice. What? (laughs) Once during my marriage of 40 years, as well as in my brief starter marriage. During the former, a sister-in-law joked endlessly about taking one of my sons, which became deeply unfunny in in very little time. When at last she bore her own son, she left my three alone. During the latter marriage, I had wisely chosen not to procreate, which became the problem. In the eyes of my infertile sister-in-law, my womb was just sitting there. What a cop you. That's Why wouldn't sad. I be inseminated by my brother in law via a turkey pastor? What the hell? My own selfishness, uh, my sister in law concluded, prevented them from gastating, giving birth to, and surrendering the newborn to a deeply entitled couple whose religious, political, and social affiliations in no way reflected my own. 
I got out of the family soon after several holiday meals had degenerated into shouting and sobbing, sometimes both at once. So her, so as, as I understood, her sister-in-law from the second marriage wanted her to have her baby mm-hmm, for mm-hmm, her. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's just boundaries, people, boundaries. I think, have you ever watched this film? I think there's a movie in, in Netflix uh, where where they have the same predicament or the same story where um, mm-hmm. there's a couple who desperately wants to have a bio- biologi- uh, biological child. <laughs> like, yeah. they want to get pregnant. Yeah. And the woman just can't have uh, any children. Like, she can't uh, bear any of them. Mm-hmm. And so they convince... Uh, the woman's niece to do the whole fertility procedure so that she can get pregnant of their child and it's just so so fucking crazy to even imagine that but apparently it happens apparently it's normal or maybe not normal but it has happened happened. yeah yeah do you know the name of it no, I need to Google it. Okay, I'm terrible at names, but I will. I will. Send wow, that you the sounds link. intriguing, yeah. though. And also, like horrifying, but what? The f- yeah, yeah. Perfect. Crazy. Yeah. Would you? I mean, I don't know if you ever, ever want to be pregnant, but mm. would you even consider carrying out the baby for someone else? Ah, uh, that's that's a very good question. I mean, <laughs> I mean, technically yes, but. Oh. But, um, yeah, I've, I've been thinking a lot about that, those kind of situations, you know. Really? Like, okay. Yeah, because um, I once heard that, you know, it kind of objectifies the woman, you know, when, when, you, when you make her be pregnant of your child, you are just utilizing her for her body. But if she agrees, mm-hmm. then there's kind of a consent. So even though the woman yeah. has been objectified for the purposes of others uh, if she consents then everything is all right and i'm not quite sure about that you know so the qu- yeah so you know technically yes but morally and ethically like i'm not sure if i would i think do it. i'm more curious about do you think you would even be able you know to go through the whole process of those nine months mm. being pregnant having mm. those risks and everything and birthing this child and then just give it away. Yeah. Would you? Do you feel like you would be able to do that? Yeah. Well, I've heard of, of a lot of women um, that they do not feel this kind of uh, mother-child connection as intense as everyone mm-hmm. assumes uh, wo- uh, yeah. mothers do. So I think, yeah. But you know, I will also ask ask myself like the question of like how much would they pay me to? <laughs> I uh, think maybe. pretty well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't know. Um, maybe. Maybe if I'm in a desperate situation, <laughs> you I will mean, see yeah. me with a eight month. <laughs> so old. Uh, I mean, it's a different but... situation if it happens out of accident. Yeah, I mean, but if yeah. someone truly came to you and would be like, "We can't get pregnant. Would you do?" I mean, it's illegal in our country, mm. but just it, it, yeah. let's assume it would. Let's be just possible. assume. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I also have this argument or this thought of thinking, you know, like, well, there are so many children that could be adopted yeah. or so many things that you could do before having a child that uh, was created with your egg and your yeah. semen. Like, why why do you have to do all this when there are so many children in need of desperate love? You know, like, yeah. that's also yeah, kind of the I arguments that. I have where I think, I don't know, I would rather support you to to find a child or or to love a child that already exists and already yeah, needs love already than creating from, yeah. another one in a very expensive and complicated and way. And don't forget that it's super dangerous for your pregnancy. Yeah, so yeah. I, I think I couldn't do it. I think, first of all, because of the risks. I mean, mm. every pregnancy bears a risk for your own health. Yeah. And I think it's one thing to do it for my own child, but doing it for someone else, even out of a good reason... There's so many adoption out there possible. If it wouldn't be possible for someone to adopt, then I would consider it maybe. Mm, mm. But I, I also think I couldn't go through nine months and not love this child. 
I think mm. I would love it from the first instance, even though it wouldn't be technically mine. Mm. So I don't it's think so I would be capable to man. do that. It's so complicated, man. Yeah. Like for me, adoption was always the solution. But <laughs> yeah. recently um, you see all these documentaries about adopted uh, children or adults, mm -hmm. adults who were adopted as children and how they still have to deal with the trauma of having been abandoned or not knowing who their biological parents are or yeah. finding even out that their biological parents didn't even want to give them to adoption and they were forced by the government to do so. Like, oh goodness, it's yeah. so complicated okay. yeah. that you realize that ad adoption yeah. is not like the best solution for the uh, in the interest of the child. Like, it's, I think it yeah. can be, though. Like, there's mm. a lot of situations where people were also super happy and they love their parents. I think yeah. it really also depends it, on how the definitely. family treated it. But it's so complicated. But I, I follow a lot of... Um, so parent influencers mm -hmm. that um, adopted mm -hmm. and it's just also it's not as easy to process to adopt as you might think it's actually yeah. super hard mm. and there are scammers out there yeah. I didn't even think about that oh my god yeah. where one um, of the ones that I followed they uh thought they could adopt twins mm -hmm. and it turned out to be a scam and Jeez. that was hard breaking to watch Obviously. when they found out i mean can you imagine they even had a made a baby shower and everything <laughs> because Dude. yeah obviously you, you kind of want to have all this experience even though you are going to adopt and in the end it turned out happy they mm -hmm. were able in the end now to adopt a little baby girl so mm. it's one of the so most beautiful worked stories. Out it somehow, worked out, but, but it's it's tough. I think it took them two years. Yeah, yeah. Like um, I, yeah. I know people who, or I know like one or two couples who uh, tried to adopt and just weren't capable. So they just went to the USA and got <sighs> like just... you know a woman to be pregnant yeah. for them. So see, and now they have three yeah. children. Like, <laughs> well, oh wow, they exaggerated a little bit, but you know that's how it is. But I mean, yeah. No, it's 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 not that easy. It's I not mean, that easy. If you think easy. about it, in the end, if you want if you want to have a child, mm -hmm. it could take you up to four or five years until you actually have one. If you try for a year and it doesn't work, and then go through IVF a year, and then again maybe a year adopting. I mean, it it could yeah. take five years. Yeah, that's just yeah. crazy to me. I was definitely you know definitely. me as being a naive teenager child. We <laughs> thought if I just miss one time the pill i just get pregnant in that second and, well, you <laughs> and, know, and it can happen it i know can it can happen, happen but i know <clears throat> my mom <laughs> <laughs> you, you you were you were the case you were the unwanted surprise or you no you i was i think the only wanted <laughs> <laughs> surprise. no but That's i mean my me. mom got pregnant at 17 right with, with a one night stand and uh, my, with my brother then yeah. she met my my yeah. father then i was pretty much planned mm -hmm. i would say mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i have two younger siblings now which are 18 and 15 years younger with you know my mom again two different men pretty mm -hmm. much mm -hmm. one i stand again i guess right, right. <laughs> so someone's super fertile here <laughs> <laughs> you can say it so yeah uh, yeah yeah no but but that's the amazing thing how we as women have the you know the power of creating another human being it's and crazy, how honestly. nowadays yeah. people try to manipulate that the mother nature somehow and i think that's so crazy i think i'm really fascinated by pregnancies honestly and yeah. birthing and everything because I, i do think it's it's crazy that we can do that okay i mean Yeah, creating a life inside of you, all the biology yeah. that comes with it. Yeah. I just think, and even, you know, the possibility to just go from this body to then producing supplies, producing the food for another human being with your body. It's just stunning. It's mind blowing to me, honestly. Yeah. It's just yeah. crazy that Definitely. we can do that. Yeah. So coming back to the question, would I do it? Technically, <laughs> yes, it depends. <laughs> but... In general, I do not support that strategy of getting a child. Like, I do not... I can't yeah. stand behind that, you know? I can't yeah. stand behind that type of method to get a child, so... And I think and, that's... Yeah. And I also think that if you do it, then let's not get any woman who is, who is related to you genetically to be involved. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, please. Just, do it with just, someone that you at least probably never see it again. yeah yeah something as a favor to you and them exactly but i do get why it's illegal in our country mm. or i think in whole europe probably i'm not very sure but yeah me neither i i do understand <laughs> i think it's also really 
It uh, complicates things. Yeah, it's super complicated. Yeah, yeah. But okay. Well, <laughs> anyway. We have one last, no kind of story. It's more of a palate cleanser where you just, you know, get a little lighthearted vibe here. Um, <laughs> After talking about pregnancies yeah. and the use of the womanly <laughs> body. Yeah. So it's a, it's, it's a question from the subreddit r slash ask reddit. It's what job would you absolutely never do in your life? We're just in a few, in a few seconds going to see what people wrote about that. But what's a job you would never do? Oh, that's such a tough question. Yeah. <laughs> Because I've been thinking about it. Um, and like, I'm not usually the person that gets disgusted easily like i mm -hmm. don't mind to do the dirty job if you, <laughs> if you put it that way like literally the dirty like job. literally so like that doesn't disgust me or it's yeah. an absolutely no-go so i don't know what i would definitely never do is there and is you? there no job that you would think it's super boring for example well yeah that yes uh, <laughs> there are some like the whole finance sector i just would never do it. that's the one i wanted to say like yeah or anything, yeah. or you know the jobs at a a amazon or whatever where you get li yeah. like a sh so such a shit to wage for so much stress and, like, i think i would even prefer doing that than honestly doing accounting like <laughs> respect to the guys that do that i couldn't i would be bored as heck yeah yeah <laughs> it's just so, so there are jobs that th there are a lot of jobs that i would definitely not do but that yeah. i would never do Under any circumstance, <laughs> I think that's that's no. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I honestly, thinking. I think in my case, I could never do a medical job. Again, mm. I have the biggest respect for those people, and I admire the people that do that. I just, I tried it once. Mm. I actually, uh, I went to do an internship uh, as a vet, you know, and I saw how they did an operation on a cat and i fainted <laughs> right. oh my goodness it was right. the most traumatizing thing i ever seen uh, and right, basically just for the fact that i can't see blood mm -hmm. i i can't deal i can't deal with those things it's just no <laughs> with organs and no, muscles and, and blood and uh, i mean i can i can alive. barely watch it i honestly in a tv show or anything <laughs> but actually doing it myself i i couldn't oh my god and what do so, people have said The first comment is being the person who has to clean out porta potties at a musical festival. I can't even imagine the horror. Oh yeah, you know mm -hmm. those uh, those toilets they put on yeah, there in yeah, the festivals, yeah, cleaning yeah. those. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we got one. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, someone else wrote customer service or tech support. Wouldn't want to be yelled at all day for stuff that isn't my fault. <laughs> I honestly, that's what I thought. All those IT guys that the poor guys, yes. and, and, and you know, I always have to laugh at thinking that probably the most that they have to do is just call someone and they're like, "My computer isn't working," and they're just responding, "Have you tried to turn it off and on again?" Oh, it works now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank definitely. you. Definitely. And just one more. Hospice nurse are a different breed. Yeah. So someone wrote above that. My father died in a hospice care facility. You are correct. But the sweet, unexplainable smell you get when death is near will forever stay in my memories. To this wow. day, going inside a hospital gives me anxiety. It's a job only for the best of souls and hearts. Yeah. Yeah. Although I could imagine myself working at a hospice. I, I find really? it, yeah, I find that interesting somehow. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would have guessed that. <laughs> even though it would be maybe sometimes disgusting at the end, you know? <laughs> But yeah, I would be I would be intrigued, I must say. And I think I could yeah. tolerate the situation. Well. I think and there's a lot of people that are, you know, tougher that can't yeah, stand that have those cold things blood, they don't definitely, yeah definitely I like don't. i could i could never help in an emergency you know where there are bodies everywhere on the ground be after an explosion yeah. like i could never deal with that type of level yeah. of cold-bloodedness but you know working in a hospice i think i could do that yeah. i actually would love to um be an uh obgyn or so you know being the one that delivers babies or yeah, helps with delivering yeah, babies yeah. but here's again the thing i would have to deal with uh, 
C-sections doing yeah. operations. I couldn't do that. So <laughs> just because not a best. job for me. Right. <laughs> I just want the part where the baby's out or, you know, taking care of the pregnancy. But all the medical stuff, I just, I think <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> right, right. But yeah, that was the teasme for today. <laughs> <laughs> and if your tia has a better story, let us know. <laughs> Thanks for listening in and like and share and tell us what you thought about this. What job would you never do, honestly? <laughs> yeah, let us know in the comments. And please come back for the episode next week as we continue part two of This People Are Delusional and see what more we have in store for you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so thank you so much for supporting we love you. <laughs> Until next time. Bye. Bye. -bye.